This is Dr. Mariah White, host of Your Life Matters. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. How's it going, everybody? Hey, guys. This is Keith. And Katie from Coffee with Keith and Katie on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. When you're done listening to this show, I hope you'll come check out our show, Coffee with Keith and Katie. A new episode comes out every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Pageant pals. <laughs> I'm Maddie. And I'm Jess. And we are back with another episode of Crown and Dangerous. This is episode three. Our previous episodes covered the recap of Miss America 2.0 or 2019, whichever one it is. <laughs> and our intro episode where we talked about the new changes and a little bit about ourselves. Yep. So if you haven't listened to those yet, go back and listen. Um, but it's, it's only going up from here, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. I feel like the first couple episodes are always the most difficult because I just don't know how to speak. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, America. What are we doing? We don't know. I don't know. Um, so here we're, <laughs> we're going to kind of discuss some uh, pageant stereotypes because there are plenty of them. Um and Jess, we're going to bust right through them. What would you say is one that you've gotten the most as a title oh, holder or competing? Like, which one have you heard the most? I feel like at every single appearance, they're like, oh, congratulations, you're so beautiful. And that oh, yeah, kind of throws me off because it's like, actually, um, I'm also educated and I also, <laughs> you know, do a lot in my community. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this title is not just about how Actually, I look. I read leaves last week. <laughs> <laughs> For real. And I'm, I don't know. I always get frustrated about that, that like people just think I'm there to look pretty. Right. Or something. But that's my most frustrating one is that people think that like pageant girls just don't have any substance and they're just there to smile and wave. <laughs> I even hate that term pageant girls. Ew. I, I mean, like we all use it, but at the same time, it's like, oh, chunga puke. Like. <laughs> <laughs> You make me charf. I just don't like it. <laughs> Neither do I. Neither do I. We'll get um, to that. Do you have Do you have one that people have brought up to you before? Um. Uh, usually, at a lot of appearances too, they always have food there, and oh, it's heck, always yeah. like, "Oh, can you eat that?" And I'm always like, "I mean, I can eat it, and I'm going to eat it." <laughs> <laughs> well, that exactly. I mean, we'll delve in, delve into that one a lot deeper. Yep. But I just, oh, that one makes me really mad because then it makes me feel kind of uncomfortable. And like, yeah. they kind of judge you and I don't like that. I know. But it's like weird though, because no matter what people say to you at an appearance, I always like, just kind of like, haha, gotta brush it off because I'm not about to start a fight right now. <laughs> right. It's always the haha. No. Or actually, I do yeah. eat this or I do do this or. Yeah. Oh, frustrating. Okay. Right. Let's Should we just, just jump in? Yeah. Yeah. Jump right into the deep end. <laughs> okay, so first stereotype, probably the biggest one, is that like to do pageants, you are you have to be tall and skinny and just outstandingly beautiful. And first of all, I think being beautiful is completely subjective. It's so subjective. Like no matter who you are, your your own perception of beauty is completely different from the person next to you. I mean, I just think that's a stupid all of all of these are stupid stereotypes but that one frustrates me really because there's so many different kinds of people especially in the Miss America program because it is scholarship based we have so many girls who are like freaking intelligent and beautiful and they might not be a size 0 and who cares like i don't well, know that one that one frustrates me even like oh you have to be this to do pageants actually plot twist if you pay the fee you can run i mean that's literally <laughs> what it is so not basically right exactly and even this is okay this is a cringe moment for sure but beauty pageant but it's like 
also, I mean, I've always heard people talk about inside beauty too. And I know that's, oh, that's so soft and whatever. Like I said, cringe. But <laughs> no, honestly, and people always say, oh, I think it's inner beauty or something like that. Um, right. Which is true. I mean, there's, I mean, well, actually, you know, let's save the, the part that I'm getting to for a stereotype later in. Okay. Okay. But um, like I said, I found some articles and somebody said they call them scholarship programs, but in reality, there's too much focus on the beauty aspect. Oh. What, do you, what do you say about that? And this is a, and this is a quote from a girl from Colorado, I guess, that has run before. Interesting. Okay. I mean, I, I get it. I get where she's coming from because, you know, when you compete in a pageant, like I, I got a spray tan and, you know, like we're coloring our hair and like making sure our makeup looks good and all this. But at the same time, like you don't win off of that. Right. That doesn't matter. That's the thing too, is that you don't ask the judges, do you like my makeup? Do you like my hair? Do you like my spray? No, it's what you choose to do and what you feel most like confident and comfortable doing. Like I do my makeup a certain way that I like it. And if someone else doesn't like it, okay, that's great. But that's not you, you know? Exactly. And I, yeah, I, I think it's, it's frustrating when people make the assumption that, well, it, it can't be a scholarship program because you're walking on stage in a swimsuit. Um, but it is, I mean, my ability to walk on stage in a, in a swimsuit um, definitely doesn't determine like how good of a title holder I am and how intelligent I am. And and my swimsuit's not what, what's going to win me a pageant. It's my ability to speak. And that's what they're giving me a scholarship for is because I'm educated and I know how to speak. But I feel like that la- <laughs> this whole last phrase that I was speaking, I'm like mumbling and jumbling. But um, I don't know. I think you make sense. You make sense to me. I get it. But okay. you do. Because the thing is about swimsuit and everything, that's 10% of your score. So yeah, it doesn't do much. But at the same time, You know, it shows that you're committed to being well-rounded, which Mm -hmm. why wouldn't we want to promote that? You know what I mean? Right, right. And, and, And that's the part where, like, I'm full force. Like, that's why I loved being involved in the Miss America program is because it totally is about being well-rounded. Like, you have to know how to speak. You have to know, you know, or you have to be involved in your community and, um, be committed to your education and, but also, you know, make sure that you're healthy mentally and emotionally and physically and, that's a well-rounded woman, I think. And, um, so definitely I, I think the, they call them scholarship programs, but it's actually too focused on beauty is such, I mean, it's just one person's thought about it, but I feel like a lot of people have that thought too. Well, I understand. And even with swimsuit, it's such a double-edged sword because it's like, Hey, we are telling you to be healthy, but then we're also saying, no, be comfortable in your own skin. So people say, you know, is that promoting obesity? Is that promoting self-confidence? You know, honestly, there's a pro negative to every single situation you have in life. It's all about your perception. So it's sticky. It's, yep. I it's agree. opinion, just like all pageants are, you know. Yep. It's just someone's opinion. Yeah. That's, <laughs> and yeah, that's what it is. But I, I think in, in regards to this stereotype that you have to be tall and you have to be skinny and you have to be beautiful, which is subjective. Um, that's completely false because there are so many women in this program that are maybe like five, two or, you know, not, um, quote unquote skinny. Um, because I think there is more of a focus on, your involvement in in your community and what you can contribute. And um, so I think that's more important. So right. Let's let's move on to the next one, actually. Yeah. But yeah, I would consider that one debunked. Um, So next stereotype, I feel, okay. Stereotype is that pageant girls are complete idiots. (laughs) (laughs) Which, okay. Yeah, I understand because uh me (laughs) no but like in in regards to like intelligence um it's just this is the thing though okay I think most of this stereotype comes from the onstage question portion of the competition and let me tell you oh yeah let me tell you first of all as I said in episode one I have never been a fan of onstage question I've always said that it's not my strong suit I miss when it was five percent of the score but whatever, not my organization. <laughs> Hashtag, I should start that. Anyways. Um, 
That's so hard to get up in front of an audience not knowing anything you're going to be asked. And usually you're asked a question, a political question that the government can't even figure out about how to <laughs> defeat ISIS or how if we should be selling uh, marijuana legally and everything. And it's, you know, it's challenging girls from ages 18 to 25 or mm-hmm. maybe even 17 to 25, um, you know, questions that people who went to school for this and people who live their lives can't even reach a decision. So that really bothers me. Right. That's and not- I, I, I hate when people are like, oh, well, that was such an awful onstage question. I, that girl did not answer that correctly. But I challenge, they have done it. <laughs> I, exactly. I challenge people to, to get up on stage and try and answer a question like, there's this one there's this one uh it wasn't an onstage question but it was in one of my interviews and they kicked off the interview by asking me about genital mutilation of young girls in developing countries and I was like uh (laughs) you know it's like it's it's things that you're not prepared to answer but of course when you're preparing for a pageant you you know you're you're aware of what's going on in the world but at the same time someone off the street I love the the Jimmy Kimmel videos of people <laughs> off the street answering Miss America questions because most people can't do it. Right. And you have to be intelligent. You have to be well-versed and you have to be following on current events and have an opinion about them um, in and order to talk about it. It's okay not to know everything about everything. I don't think that at appearances or anything, you're supposed to you know talk about hop on topics. Just even with the uh, topic that you just brought up about the mutilation in other countries, I mm-hmm. honestly have not read news, or news articles on that. I remember reading about that in a Seventeen magazine. Right. You know, it's it's things that, you know, there are topics that we don't even maybe hear about every day, but they'll still bring them up and you better still have an answer for it. Yep, exactly. And it's just, honestly, it's not even, it's being well-versed on a lot of subjects, but it's also being able to think on your feet very quickly. Because even if you don't know the answer, there's a, certain way you can word it to make it sound like you know what you're talking about we've all done it yep for (laughs) sure for sure we've all taken that route every onstage question I've ever had even at even at the state pageant this year my preliminary onstage question (laughs) was something that I I I had heard about and I had studied before but it wasn't something that I really was super focused on knowing about um and I was just like well uh, here we are. Let's just make this up and hope it works. Um, but yeah, I think it's okay to not know the answer. But I think, again, that like makes you 100% more real because you shouldn't know every single answer to every single question in the entire world. But by all means, I think uh, pageant girls are definitely not idiots just because they're thrown a hard question that not even the government can answer. <laughs> exactly. And the thing is to the pressure at that point, you know, when you're spending a week at your state pageant with all the girls you're competing with, it, it can get to you. And I always think it's really good to be really relaxed and just kind of say, oh, you know, like look in the mirror and just kind of, you know, say screw it. But mm-hmm. that's the thing, though, like the pressure can get so intense. And the thing is, you work all year for this. And then the pressure is that it all comes down to this one moment. And either you are kicked out of the nest and you fly or you fall to the ground. Yes. Like, again, both, you know, both things happen to everyone. And that's okay. But right. just one off day does not mean somebody's an idiot or that they're stupid or they're a dumb blonde, you know, that, that I don't think is okay to judge somebody on. And like you said, I would like to see other people do this because it's not as easy as it looks and just support people that are trying to better themselves in any way. That's what we should be doing. That's what's exactly. something that is great about Miss America. Yep. I agree. And I think, uh, I mean, all the women that I've met in this program have a pretty impressive education. And I mean, that's, that's a huge reason why a lot of girls compete is to get those scholarship dollars to put toward their education so they can continue bettering themselves and, uh, to expand their knowledge. And so, I mean, a hundred percent encourage that. So definitely not idiots. That's for sure. (laughs) Yep. Rock on. All right, that um, one's busted. <laughs> yeah, we bu- we bust we put the nail on that coffin. <laughs> Let's move on to one that we kind of talked about earlier about pageant girls not eating. I know I told that story about you know when people say, "Oh, well, do you eat?" But, but that I really don't like. That really bothers me actually because it makes me feel way more self conscious mm-hmm. um, and not as comfortable. So I don't like that. But I also want to make a point now that you know the game has changed so much that so many girls who train 
you know, for Miss America or whatever, do weight training and that you actually need to eat a lot for that to gain muscle. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I I kind of experienced this too, even within the past couple of years when I've been competing is that um, my specific body type, I need to eat a lot and do some weight training in order to feel good and um, feel healthy and strong. And mm-hmm. To say that no pageant girls don't eat, they can't eat. They're trying to be skinny. Um, there have definitely been some girls that I've met that have done that the unhealthy way. But majority of us, I mean, I definitely have to eat a lot and and train a lot to make sure that I, I'm feeling good because that reflects on me mentally too. Um, well, and I and I've seen girls too, you know, not eat the day of swimsuit prelims or whatever, and people have passed out, and it's kind of like what you know, what message are you sending to people or to little girls maybe in the audience who say, wow, I want to be like her and have that confidence? Well, you know, if somebody behind the scenes has been starving themselves all day, how is that a healthy, positive role model? Exactly. Exactly. I think um, um, one of the big parts of uh, pageantry, I hate that phrase, but um, (laughs) (laughs) one of my favorite parts of being involved has been learning more about myself and being more self-aware and knowing what's best for me. Um, And part of that has been, you know, taking, taking a a stand against um, people who have come up to me and they're like, Oh, you're way too skinny. Um, You should eat more, eat a burger. And I think that's so offensive because you wouldn't go up to someone who is maybe having a hard time losing weight and be like, Oh, maybe you should eat a salad. (laughs) You know, (laughs) you know, like maybe you should hit the gym more often. Like (laughs) how offensive is that? You know, it it, it completely goes both ways. So uh, pageant girls definitely eat. Um, Again, I hate that term pageant girls, but, um, but seriously, like the last, when we're in our hotel rooms, like I'm eating constantly ordering pizza. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've ordered toppers so many times. Heck yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I just, I just feel like the stereotype that pageant girls don't eat is so false because a lot Didn't of us we go to do- McDonald's like every night of our prelims this past year at state. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had, I had Taco Bell both nights of prelims. I had McDonald's. Oh, it was great. Um, but yeah, they usually only feed us salads and things <laughs> during pageant week. And I'm like, no, I need carbs. <laughs> yeah. That's so. a whole nother episode. <laughs> that is a whole nother episode. Um, but yeah, crazy. I, I just kind of learned to, you know, take control of my health and take care of my body. And I think that's one thing that, that is really important to me and to a lot of girls too, is to make sure you're eating enough and fueling your body the right way. Right. Let's, let's jump ship to, um, when I, you know, found these stereotypes, one was the use of spray tans and makeup and some people have weighed in and they want a more natural pageant. Um, and, you know, it's also with that argument, I talked about the double-edged sword. Is it about altering your body or is it like to feel confident or should we be telling people to feel comfortable in their own skin? They don't need any makeup. Right. You know, honestly, I just feel like with so many of these topics, you just can't win with people. Right. Yeah, people, not everyone is going to understand. You just have to accept that. But like I said, we're here debunking them today. But what do you think on that? Well, like spray tans and makeup and all that um, stuff for on stage? Well, I know um, I know that even for a lot of local pageants, they have um, workshops and stuff like your first hometown title. You guys have a lot of workshops and things and to kind of prepare for the pageant. And they always say, you know, you can get a spray tan if you want. And, um, you know, usually it it just makes you stand out on stage a little bit more, makes your skin look really glowy and, and nice. But I mean, they always teach you that, you know, wearing makeup a little bit makes your features stand out. And, you know, that, um, kind of helps with under like super heavy stage lights. But in terms of the debate on altering your body versus telling someone to be comfortable in their skin, I think it comes down to, letting people do what they want to in order to be comfortable in their own skin. Like people always ask, well, do you think it's fair if we allowed women to get plastic surgery and still compete in a pageant? I think it's like, you know what? Like let, I, yeah, in MAO we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like people always have that debate, like, should they be able to compete if they, you know, had like a boob job or something, you know, like (laughs) I, and I think they should, I mean, it doesn't matter 
what makes someone comfortable or what makes someone confident. I think we should support everyone in, in what makes them feel, be- feel beautiful in their own way. Um, and whatever you need to do to feel that way, go for it. Um, but I think, oh, that's, that's really tricky though. It is really tricky because I'm, right. I mean, my platform's all about female empowerment and women's empowerment and knowing your worth, but I think it's encouraging people to, I mean, do whatever they want to, to feel comfortable. And, and if that means getting a spray tan or if that means not getting a spray tan, like who cares if that's your hundred percent authentic self and that's who you feel best as then do it. Yeah. I would just say on that, like be comfortable in your own skin, be comfortable without makeup. But at the same time, if you want to, I think makeup and hair and everything is kind of also a form of self-expression and for sure. Like you said, do what do what you want. Honestly, like I said, feel comfortable in your own skin, but there's nothing wrong with wanting, you know, to do something different. And makeup and spray tans, those are temporary. So ultimately, you do need to be comfortable with who you are because that's what you get and that's how you're going to be for the rest of your life. The makeup comes off, the spray tans come off. Like you yep. said, it helps you stand out on stage. That's great, but yeah. Yeah, you, know, you should 100% be comfortable without those two. Um I agree. I agree. Just but yeah, I think it do just, you. just do you, do you, I, I, I see spray tans and makeup and stuff as just kind of a way to combat the bright stage lights and stuff. And totally. I'm super pale. So I know that I don't want people like being blinded when I walk out on stage. Yeah. I love my spray tan. Honestly, it's if I could be tan all year round. <laughs> I think spray tans are so healthy as opposed to tanning beds. I've never stepped foot in a tanning bed and I never will. No, same. Um, so honestly, like, why wouldn't you, if people are going to tan, why wouldn't you want them to do a spray tan over a yeah. bed tan with bulbs? But yeah, I don't like, know. Whatever. That one's, that one's really tricky, but yeah, you do you. Do whatever you want. Totally. <laughs> All right. Express yourself. Express yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Moving <Okay>. on. <laughs> this one I think is really fun. It's I a love stereotype. this one. <laughs> it's a stereotype that pageant, ugh, again, pageant girls, I hate that term, are catty and fake oh honestly (laughs) Hmm. okay this can go two ways honestly it can there I majority of my pageant experiences I've had fantastic relationships with other girls like like me and you Maddie like we met through the Miss America program and (laughs) BFS like (laughs) we were kids (laughs) (laughs) yeah like we didn't know each other through like before we got involved but now I mean, I've met so many women who are so strong and like have, um, are so kind and so generous and majority of the people that I've met are that same way. Um, right. but yeah, you do get a couple of girls who really take it very seriously and might get very competitive and that can come off as catty or mean or whatever. Um, but right. yeah, I think there, there's good and bad people. And I think it's the same in, in the pageant industry, too. Like, you will find some really, really fantastic people. And there might just be a couple that you just don't vibe with. Well, that's the thing, too, is that it's funny, because when that stereotype tries to get debunked, I feel like the first the go to answers, everyone is always, you know, says, Oh, no, everyone's so great. Like, we all support <laughs> each other. And it's like, again, to some extent, yes. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, there's always, you know, a few in the bunch as there is in anything in life that are just, oh my goodness, you know, it's, there's, like you said, there's good and bad people everywhere. And honestly, they are everywhere. Yep, for you sure. You know, everybody has different motivations. And I think something that helps is perspective and realizing that there's more to life than competing in pageants. You know, I think that when you get so power hungry and you only focus on that, that's when you lose a lot of relationships and, you know, you burn some bridges. And I think that when you have a little bit more humility, and I think too, this is what I always say, I think, yeah, it's great to win pageants, but I think it's so important to lose pageants as well. Oh, for sure. I think think you learn so much, not just for like, oh, I need to work on this, but how to lose gracefully and maybe to have a reality check because again in life you're not always going to get what you want and even if you work really really hard for something you still may not get it but you have to have faith in you know the plan or whatever and know that something better is going to happen potentially but for sure yeah I I agree with you completely on that and um I've I've met I've met more girls more girls than 
than not. than not yeah are are just truly genuine kind people and it's really difficult especially at like a state pageant where it's pretty high caliber and like everybody is going there with like one dream and it's hard when you get a bunch of those women who are empowered and they're like, you know, we could be all like type A, <laughs> like right. we all really want to do well. It's hard to get a bunch of girls like that in the same room who all well, want the same thing. Right. And but so many, you know, the girls, they like, you know, maybe they're playing, you know, trying to play mind games or something. Right. And it's, it's been really sad to me too, because sometimes, especially during your state pageant week, you just, everyone has a moment where they get overwhelmed or upset and they just need someone to lean on and, Maybe the person that they pick to lean on can't be at that, you know, pageant with them or you only have each other at that point. So you should be leaning on each other because honestly, the only person you're competing with or against is yourself. You right. can't really control what anybody else does. But I've told you this, Jess, I've had, you know, contestants come up to me and after onstage question, they flat out told me how bad I did. That's how it happened to me a few times after my talent. They've told me that and. Honestly, yeah. like, what does that do? And this is something, I know I've said this to you, I've said this to so many people. I've said this in my blog posts. It doesn't matter how you place. People don't remember that. People remember how you made them feel and how oh, you treated sure. them. For sure. Something that you, it's just, some people, you know, some people figure that out early on. Some people never figure it out. And it's really sad, but honestly, at the end of the day, you can only control yourself and the energy that you put out into the world. So exactly, there's my exactly. two cents on that one. <laughs> I feel strongly on it. Yeah. And yeah, I agree with you too. And um, I, I like to surround myself with people who are um, positive and empowering and people who are, are going to stand beside me regardless. And I feel like I've been able to do that in my involvement and, you know, pick the people who are, who are going to lift you up and, and be there for you. And if, if someone else has a different motive, then just, I mean, don't worry about it then just kind of pass on it. Because I think that every person has room to grow and some people have more room than others to grow, but we all have uh, good and bad sides of ourselves. But sometimes um, we just have to kind of focus on the people who are, who are going to be there for us. Totally. Oh, you put it so much nicer than I do. I just feel like I'm sitting here being like, yeah, sometimes, you know, people suck and whatever. And you're like, everyone just needs to grow. It's fine. You know, I try, I try and be diplomatic, but like in my head, I have other thoughts, but like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how censored I'm supposed to be on this podcast. Yeah. No, I get it. And like you said, it's the people, honestly, it's the people that make the Miss America organization or any pageant realm and foster those relationships because you will have those relationships longer than any mm -hmm. crown than sure. any feeling you get during the pageant whatever um yep. run yep. scene whatever tour you're doing you exactly. will exactly those relationships always last longer than than you know the high points and the low points so right. and like Take i said too you know them. contestants out of all the ones I've competed with, I can maybe tell you how some of them placed, mm -hmm. but I can tell you exactly how each of them made me feel or how they treated me or how exactly. I treated them, you know? Exactly. And that stuff sticks with people, especially when people are observing. That's really evident. Mm -hmm. um, but we can get into that more when we get into our on stage episodes. Oh, for sure. For sure. But, um, but yeah, yeah. Some There are some girls who are um, very competitive and that can make them seem very catty, but there are also some really fantastic women, um, that I've met through this organization or who are involved in, in other pageant organizations too. So, and I think that's the same for everywhere you go. So this one's just kind of like a stereotype that can present itself in any sort of background. Doesn't have to be just pageantry. Right. And if any listeners have any stereotypes that they've heard they want us to debunk, please send them to our Instagram DMs or our Facebook messages at okay. Crown and Dangerous. Yes. Fantastic. Um, let's see. Do we have one more? Um, I'm trying to think. On to our Would You Rather. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any more. Um, but honestly, I feel like we hit a lot of them on the head. I think those are the big ones. I mean, those right. are the ones that I've he heard the most often. Um, but yeah, yes, like Maddie said, feel free to DM us. We love to hear from you. So um, send us all all your comments and opinions and things. We love to hear them. <laughs> exactly. 
All right. Should we wrap up with some would you rather? Would you oh. rather? <laughs> Roger. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. This is our, yeah, let's, let's, let's do it. Um, so our question for this podcast is, would you rather swear during your interview or forget your talent and run off the stage? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay um if, if you guys haven't listened to our previous podcast we're gonna try and do some like little funny things at the end of everyone like would you rather or like embarrassing moments or t- tips and tricks and things at the end of everyone and <laughs> this one <laughs> this one makes me laugh because like I feel like both of these have already happened to me <laughs> like there was one time where uh oh god I, w- I was I was doing my talent during the pageant and I <laughs> forgot it. <laughs> I just blanked my mind, forgot my choreography, had no idea, so I just improved. Um and I oh my god, I couldn't tell you how badly I just wanted to be like, well, sorry, I'm leaving. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I think oh, I think I'd rather swear during my interview, honestly. Wait, how did you place at that pageant? Oh, I I definitely didn't place. <laughs> 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 this was like this was like a few years ago like before I before I even held my first title and I was still like figuring myself out but yeah I definitely forgot my talent and improv and it did not turn out well it might turn out well for other people but definitely not for Jess do you remember when I did my black and yellow routine <laughs> yeah do you remember every time I I did it people would ask if I changed it and I said no I just made it up every single time and it <laughs> turned out a little different every time (laughs) honestly you just fake it till you make it that's how we do it around here (laughs) so true though (laughs) we're being no we're not kidding (laughs) (laughs) not kidding um yeah would you rather would you rather Uh, swear or forget your talent swear word (laughs) (laughs) depends on the swear word (laughs) um hmm oh god Part of I me think- is like, yeah, swear during your interview because it makes you seem real. <laughs> right. It's hard because and I danced Ugh. for 15 years. So it's so it would be weird for me to just like run off the stage because I've always been told, like, just make something up. Right. And like you said, too, like you, everyone knows you just make something up. Um, I think it, too, depends what time in the talent I would forget. Like if I missed the last two seconds, I could just run off. <laughs> I get way too technical with these things, though. Um, hmm. Just pick one, Maddie. <laughs> but see, the thing is, I think you, I always think you win patents in interview. But the thing is, talent is scored at a higher percentage. So I think, <laughs> I think I'd rather run off the stage. Okay. But at the same time, what swear word? If it was the F bomb or something, then I probably would run off the stage. But if it was like. <sighs> I don't know. That would depend. View, or listeners, let us know which one you would rather do because I don't even know. Yeah, I. Oh, that's tricky. Um. Oh God. All right. Let's move on to a, a our crown cringe. <laughs> crown cringe. This is where we share embarrassing moments from appearances or pageants. Um. You want to go first, Jess? Yes, I have one that makes me angry. Um. <laughs> I was at I was at an appearance um just this past year, and there was a gentleman that had approached me and (laughs) (laughs) he approaches me and he goes, he was just kind of starting casual conversation. And so I was just carrying on the conversation with him. It wasn't really anything strange at first until he asks me how old I am. And, and I'm 22, I'm over 18. And he goes, Oh, then you're in prime baby making stage. (laughs) And I'm, And I stand there and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, do I laugh or do I slap him across the face and just resign my title? (laughs) But that one made me so angry. And I think it plays into that whole stereotype that like you're just standing there to look nice. And that's not true. And it made me so angry that he was like, yeah, you're in prime baby making stage. Like, I'd love to take you home with me. And this is like an old man. And I'm like, what? (laughs) Go away. How old do you think he was? Oh, God, he was probably close to 70. Oh, okay. It's hard because I love, I love, like, I love talking to older people at appearances, but with, oh, when it's stuff like that, it's like, oh, really, dude? I know. I know. I, I feel that way, too. Like, I I love carrying on, carrying on conversations, and that's why I talked to him for quite a while, because 
it was generally genuinely not like creepy or anything until he made that comment <laughs> so that was that was kind of strange it was cringy <laughs> Uh, yeah. Do you have uh, a story? I'm trying to pick which one I want to tell on this episode. Because <laughs> I have one that kind of correlates with that, but then I have something that's totally different. Maybe I'll go with a totally different one. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I don't know. Ugh. I was at a pageant. I was 18 years old. One of my first pageants. And I remember a contestant spread a rumor that I had plastic surgery. And, I, <laughs> and I'll just let you guess which part of my body they thought I had plastic surgery on. And they just spread the rumor that I did. And then people asked me about it. And I was 18 and I was so shy and I was so scared because this girl was a lot older than me. And I just did not know where that came from because we weren't really friends. We didn't talk ever. And that just, it made me cringe just because I felt so embarrassed. And now I probably just Aww. laugh and confront the person. But yeah, <laughs> and then, and I, I, just a little baby 18 year old Madeline just scared and. Oh, trying to get through that pageant experience. <laughs> I don't know what she was trying to accomplish there. I mean, I don't know. I, at the time, it made me feel bad, but now I'd probably just be like, mm, "Really? <laughs> <laughs> um, really? You think I have implants or something?" <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, exactly. So that's my crown cringe for the day. That's uh, excellent. That's yeah. excellent. So thanks for that contestant. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that. Thanks for thinking I have fake boobs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Um, that is all we have today for this episode. Um, we're just going to wrap up here. <laughs> all right. Yeah. After that crown cringe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so be sure if you haven't, if you haven't followed already, fo follow public house media and crowned and dangerous on Instagram. You can find information on both of us there and shoot us a like over on Facebook. You can also like public house media on Facebook. Big shout out to them for uh, giving us the mic here and allowing us to share our stories. Um, right. And be sure to comment and message us on what you want to hear from our podcast. Any ideas you have, we are always super open to that. And we'll definitely mention it on our next future episodes. Oh, for sure. We love good topics. We have a we have a handful of topics we already would like to talk about, but we love hearing from, from people and, you know, kind of, kind of seeing what you're interested in. So slide on into our DMs. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, this has been quite a fun show debunking pageant stereotypes. And it's been Maddie and Jess reminding you to always wear your invisible crown, keep it real, and if you don't know what to say, world... Peace. <laughs> Bye.